Racing isn't easy, but experiencing it is. iRacing puts you in the driver's seat with the industry's leading sim racing game. Drive on laser scan replicas of the greatest racing circuits from around the world. Go head to head against other drivers chosen by skill based matchmaking to ensure competitive racing at every level. Compete across all your favorite series. In officially licensed cars, engineered to deliver the most accurate driving experience possible. Join a race or host your own with players from across the globe. Race against the computer or in a league with friends. Feel the thrill behind the wheel. Visit iRacing.com. Good evening, ladies and gents. Hello and welcome to round number three of the F3A for 2024. We've had a little bit of everything so far in terms of the conditions. Tonight, could that change yet again? Could we finally get that disastrous thunderstorm that we're looking for? Well, you're only going to find out one way, and that's by staying tuned for both the silver and uh, the pro racing that we've got here this evening. Scott Rankin alongside of Dave Roberts in terms of the commentary box. And I tell you what, Dave, we are in the mountains of Japan. That is Mount Fuji in the background. It's home of Formula One racing in Japan, at least it was in the early 2000s. It's now moved on to Suzuka, but boy, does this track have some stories to tell yeah it's a great circuit it's uh you know we're we're in the the world, tourist what is currently the tourist capital of the world because everybody seems to be going to japan and it's a fantastic place fuji what a beautiful circuit sitting there underneath the mountain but i'm not sure we're going to see it through the clouds tonight in silver dan i think it's a little wet out there by what i'm hearing and uh you know we're going to maybe see our first race for silver in the rain which should be plenty exciting look at that place wow we didn't go play golf <laughs> wait you, you go to play golf out here <laughs> oh, oh there is i see it now yeah no i see what she's talking about there is a golf course down there towards the south end of the picture but it's that long front straightaway that makes this place something so unique we don't really have another course of this kind just about anywhere maybe le mans if you're really trying to think of it in that way but in terms of regular racing circuits absolutely not design was based around hosting a japanese super speedway so the original origin Origins of this motor circuit were to bring potentially NASCAR to Japan and have something completely different. That didn't work out. The budget ran out, and then they created what we've got here. You can still see some remnants of the course, obviously the long front straightaway, some of the banking still down there as well. Daichi, just... that turn one complex, Dave, is really, really tricky, as is so many of these corners around this track. Can you imagine this back in the day where they've gone down flat out down that front straight? to where we see the word Daichi. And we look on the left there, there's a banked curve. That was full noise banked after that front straight. Phenomenal. And then it joined back in over at 100R from memory and went into that little hairpin. So that that was just must have been amazing. And they were racing things like early skylines and touring cars in the, the, uh, the just flat out around these banking. Phenomenal place. What we are going to see tonight for Formula three is that you need quite a low downforce setting and silver's got a reasonably low downforce setting because you need it for the straight line speed and if you look at there's a lot of straight line 300 hours or flat um and yet you've got this big sweeping corner where you you need downforce and then you've got all those little switchbacks where you need a loose rear end to get the car to rotate around them so we're going to see a little bit of sideways work and now we've got a bit of rain as well that's going to make it really um really interesting one of the interesting points was we were actually talking pre-show about the, what what changes here because the biggest thing about this track is that there are so many different ways to skin the cat and that's actually what makes the the circuit just phenomenal to be racing in and around um in particular 
each of the corners have got so many different lines that you can take them and for so many different reasons so it's one of those tracks that leads itself to really really good racing race craft you you have to have a strong race brain here to come out on top you need to be thinking about where you've got to be in the queue you need to be close enough to execute on that but at the same time you need to be far enough back you get enough of a toe that you can actually cruise by somebody on the straight then you're vulnerable down in the braking zone at turn number one you're going to see a lot of opportunities for people to really showcase their skill set i've been talking to a couple of the drivers particularly from the fiercely forward outfit that we'll be seeing later on and they're talking about strategy there's a lot of different debates and things going on and uh, in terms of things, it's going to be really, really interesting what qualifying results are in. Stephen Bull will line up on the front row. So we'll have first time this season. We will not be seeing both of the Webb brothers on the front row. Declan Webb will line up off alongside of him. And then we'll step back onto row number two. And uh, it's going to be Luke Fit and Ryan Jones there. Ryan had a significantly strong qualifying effort. But look at the difference in terms of those lap times, Dave. That's all down to the wet weather. Matt Morris is there on row number three off alongside of Hayden Millington. In terms of things, two and a half seconds off the pace. Curtis Webb, also two and a half seconds. It gets really, really tight in around this marker. Somebody got the conditions right. That's why they're up on pole position. Jack Humphreys also off alongside of there. Jordan Mazzarelli off alongside of Chris Island, deeper in the field. And uh, that'll take us all the way down to row number five. We'll get back outside the top 10 for David Baz, who's had a reasonably all over the place season thus far. I think that's the one thing we can say from both the rounds thus far off alongside of Aaron Cooper. Remember, one round number one. Moving back to 13th and 14th, it's going to be Josh Fitt off alongside of Scott Lefebvre. Uh, interesting to see him a little bit deeper. I think both of these drivers would like to be slightly further forward and look at the time differences because that weather played a part. Reese Margetts off alongside of Aiden Kale. We'll keep kicking through this grid as quickly as we possibly can at this point in time. Uh, Harry Lawrence and Callum Newton row up, make up row number nine. Row 10 is going to be the cars that are in behind these guys. James Chastanoff and Tyler Blackburn move it back to 21st and 22nd, which will be Luke Hyden and Damian Cairns. Good to see Damian Cairns returning to the series. Row number 12 is going to be Chris Barnes from Alex uh, Stelbovich. Uh, Max Fry, Robbie Griffiths, round out 25th, 26th, 27th and 28th, Lamb Nguyen and uh, Stephen Custis. That's the grid as we currently stand. We're in formation because that is the green flag and somebody got a good start. Somebody didn't get a good start. Look at the spray coming off the tyres as they run down to turn number one for the first time here tonight. It's going to be about bravery. It's going to be about who has cojones because you're going to need it in the wet conditions from Fuji, Dave. And already that spray is starting to fly. And look at the cars. You would not want to be a driver from it out 10th place on back what can you see guarantee you about nothing as they settle down into 100r for the first time here tonight look at them already starting to stay as far away as they possibly can from the rubber managing to get through there for the first time and back to the left hand side and already starting to try and single file out the grip levels are not great and we're starting ourselves with a reasonably wet track you can see that sunshine rain has stopped which means it's gonna start wet it's gonna dry and in 30 minutes well within less than 30 minutes it will cross over but how quickly and will there be enough time for the dry tire runners to take over it's not a significant performance advantage and it will take some time to claw that marker back you're gonna need in the realm of five to ten laps Just come around in the background there dave as well and i hope your microphone's back with us as well dave Yes, it is. <laughs> um, a couple around in the background there. So what we've had is a pretty wild start. A few guys get a bit sideways off the line, but they've been pretty good. But you can see the multiple lines are able to run. And they're, they're all trying to all one off the road there in the foreground, one of the sim rigs cars. Um, that uh, Reese Margetts, one of our generally pretty quick guys. No front wing on that car either. So there's a, there's a little bit of chaos going on out there the big thing is can they stretch the wet weather tires to the pit stop and go on to drives at the pit stop or are they gonna have to make two stops we've got four rest there down into turn one uh -oh. Gary at the end yeah this is gonna be an interesting one in terms of where it all leads out remember Aaron Cooper as well after two reasonably successful rounds leads the way from Christopher Island in terms of point settings Declan Webb strategies not going his way Reese Margetts and he saw him missing that front wing oh sorry it was Callum Newton who was missing that front wing Margetts sits in fourth place in terms of points from Humphreys 
Wade Sheedy, Jay Dixon, Jordan Mazzaroli and Philip Sanders rounds out the guys that have made it to 10 points thus far. So that's exactly how it stands currently. And now they're going to make their way down here on lap number two. And look at how many of them are all trying to vie in there. That looks to me like the Simrigs DPR car that's at the head of this queue is struggling for grip and everyone else thinks they've got a little bit more. It's Josh Fitt and may the rest of the guys come after him. It's Jordan Mazzaroli, Cooper and Luke Fitt that are in behind. Scott, there's only apparently nine cars out there on wets. Most of them are actually really? on dry tyres. Yeah. I was just a little word from our pit reporter there. That's why they're all, few guys are losing it because they're they're trying to run the thing on dry. Because it's only lightly wet. The spray's a lot worse than it looks. Well, the work. track is a lot better than the spray looks. That's, well, I, that's I, what I wonder who's kicking on. So the sidewalls of those tyres will tell us a significant amount of the story. If our, that, if our director could maybe get us in the cockpit of the leader, we'd know whether he's on wets or dries. Well, have to well, be I'm guessing... It's clear. That looks... He's on wets. He's definitely on wet tyres. You can see the ribs in them there. So if we jump back, see Matt Morris there, second place. He's on dry tyres. What an awesome job he's doing. Now he's just going to baby this thing around. In the meantime, Stephen Bull has got to go as hard as he possibly can right now. And one of the biggest factors now, I haven't tested, I haven't had the opportunity to drive this car as of yet. My word, he's, he's gaining a second a lap, over a second a lap. It's, uh, it's what, three seconds a lap? Basically, what we're looking at on, on board is, is what he's gaining as it currently stands. I haven't had an opportunity to test this car, but the key factor to me, Dave, seems that the wet tyres don't go off. Like, they don't just all no. of a sudden, the grip they stays with them for a very, very long time. Yeah, they just get a bit rubbery on the road, and they st t start to um, start to lose um, uh, just lose adhesion. They get it; it's, it gets a bit spongy, it's like driving something on forced marshmallows. Because I've been out here, and I've been out here in these drying conditions, and the, um, in the dry on the dry tyres during the week with the boys, and um, it's really it's quite good to drive on dry tyres, even when it's a little bit slippery, so long as you're very careful with it. But what will happen is it'll change over it at, uh, at some point where the drives become quicker and then the wets although they're not destroyed and you can still drive them i think we've got a we've got a safety car anyway the as the drives come good the the times just just overtake the wets immensely and you'll see suddenly five six seven seconds of lap difference well this is going to change things and this is going to change the story of the night josh fit is missing a rear wing and that does mean, I believe, we're going to have ourselves a safety car, potentially, because he's currently stranded. We, we, okay, so there will be no safety car, is what we've nope. just heard in. So that's actually exactly what Stephen wanted to hear. They're full wide on the main straight, by the way. Harry Lawrence alongside <laughs> Ryan Jones, wide. alongside of Aaron Cooper. And who's the other? David Baz. They're full wide on the run to front, the turn number one. And I tell you what, all four of these guys are on the dry tyres as well. And then there's Mazzaroli running wide just up ahead of them. This is crazy. Absolutely mental as they come through turn one. Baz is going to come away with it. Jones is still alongside of Cooper. Harry Lawrence has got to the lead. Mazzaroli's still just down the road. They haven't sorted out two by two. They go through turn number two and turn number three. Now it's on to 100R. Who's got the bravery? Where's the dryer line? The rubber. The rubber's still way too wet here, Dave. This is insane. Absolutely mental from guys on dry tyres oh. is a ton of spray. Have a Baz Wild down the outside there, but the, the, there's extra grip offline. When they get off the, you'll see the dark patch down through the middle of the road. That's where the rubber is. That's where they don't want to be on these tyres at the moment. They're trying to stay out of the rubbered area because it's slippery. They're looking for the extra grip down the inside like this. That's just oh, it cleans out. way too late. There's three of them there. That was way too late. But that's what happens in the rain. I mean, it's about bravery. It's about committing to the conditions. And David Baz is overcommitted to the conditions. Sometimes yeah. you've got to drive to the standard as it currently stands. Harry Lawrence is now sideways but off the course. Where is Stephen Boyle? Whoa. Look at them going Cooper. around. Cooper's got no balance Drifty. in the rear of the car. Have a look at Stephen Ball, though. Nine seconds clear. Absolutely storming away. And if it's dry enough at the pit stop to go to the dries, he's confirmed a race win. He's just got to trickle home. He's just he got to get this car. car. He's just got to get this car to the point where he can make a pit stop and 
run the fuel to the end. And at that point, whenever that is, if it's the next lap, it doesn't matter. And when he does it, he's got to go to dry tyres and he's off. He's white. Here's, here's the question, Dave. We've only got a couple of drivers that actually are on that dry tyre as it currently is. Sorry, wet tyre as it currently stands. I, I'm looking around and my first thought is right now, I'd take the pit stop. Because it's going to be, what, 25 seconds? He's making up four seconds a lap on the field right I now. I wish iRacing would tell us who's on wets and who's on dries. There's no indicator. Where's the F1 leaderboard with the wets oh, and dries on? Max Fry's just been collecting. Oh, Carl oh, Newton's hit the no, back end of him. Yeah, no rear wing on that car either. Absurd. Oh, there it is. Max Fry. That was Callum Newton that went rocketing into yeah, the back, I, back I of him. Oh, my coming. word. So what's happened here? Max Fry's in the third car there in the queue. So, oh, he's got clobbered from behind. So, the, you know, race control will be all over this as well. And people will be getting penalties for these mistakes, even though it's wet. You still, you can't run in the back of somebody. Oh, absolutely not. My word. Where do we look? That's that's the key right now is where do you look? Because it's just chaos. I can tell you, uh, uh, ladies and gents watching along okay. at home, I'll give you some information. I'll give you the drivers that are currently on the wet tyres. To start on the wet tyre, we know Stephen Bull. Then we've got James Chastanoff, Luke Fitt, Callan Arthur, Chris Barnes, Luke Hyden. Uh, from there, we've got Leith Hardy, Stephen Cassidis, and Aiden Kale, other drivers that are currently on the wet wet tyre. So we've got to keep half a half an eye on them. Aiden Kale's doing quite well at the moment. He's taking a bunch of time out of the car ahead of him, but he is so far back. What's interesting is Curtis Webb there in third. I know Curtis was he's been really fast the first couple of rounds, but in the wet here and he's really struggled with this track. He was I think he was 14th fastest pre-qualifier, which is just unheard of. You know, he's been out the front. He was really struggling with it. And in the rain, he was having big problems. But there he is up P3 now. So I think he and Matt Morris are looking pretty good because even though they're nine seconds behind, you know, you got to change tyres. And these guys don't have to change tyres. If they make a pit stop, it's fuel only, and they're in and out. So how much Look time is... Look at that spray, Dave. Look yeah, at that spray. It's lessening. That's something yeah, yeah. to start thinking about. This is pretty. This is pretty dry now. From it looks wet, um, and I racing is still working on just. Oh, oh that's Curtis speak. I, was, I did Curtis the uh, the the commentators curse, didn't I? Um, but uh, you know, it, it's it's not as wet as it looks. The I racing is still. This is their first release of the rain. They're a fabulous job, but I think that there's more spray than there is wet weather at the moment, and it's not as wet as it looks. Um, these guys are, you know, you think that's really, really wet. It's not. It's only just damp. So um, I'd be looking at that gap and seeing if Matt Morris is start, when he starts to pull in Stephen Bull, because that'll last change. Lap. Look at this. Let's go to the last lap time between the two of these guys. Four tenths of a second between them. Four, four and a half yeah. tenths of a second between those lap times. The previous lap, it was out over a second. So it's coming down. Yeah. And on that previous lap as well, they took the time down into... They were both outside the 41s. Uh, now they're underneath that. So that is how much the track is improving already. Leith Hardy's going to come to the lane in one of the first cars. I wonder whether or not that might be damage related. But for right now... 11 and a half seconds. Something's just happened to Matt Morris. Morris has had an issue, and now that lead catapults outside of 12 seconds. So he's done the job. Stephen mm. Bull is just going to run a clean race from here. He's covered himself off. If they take a second to lap out of him on those dry tyres from here, he will still win comfortably because he'll pit before them. Yeah, but the thing is, if the drives come into their own, it's going to be a lot more than a second to lap. Oh, he's just touched that inside white line. Whoa. The line, the white lines are incredibly slippery. Uh, you know, down at the turn one, you see the the line that comes out of the pits that marks the exit. I touched that, and the car was just like I hit pure ice. It was uh, it, phenomenal how slippery it is in braking zones when you find that little bit of white paint or whatever. Incredibly slippery. So. Uh... I'm, I'm sort of debating. I'm looking around. Can we get a shot of James Chastanoff's tyre? Stephen Bull's in. Stephen Bull's straight into the lane. So he must have hit as far as he needed to go to get that fuel into the car, and he's going to come in for slick tyres. That's perfect. Yep. That is absolutely perfect. It's so good that it's not just about 
being the fastest guy, but these guys have got to think about when to change, what tyres to be on, you know, do they take tyres, you know, fuel stop, when do they fuel stop? There's a lot more to it than just driving a race car, just like the real thing. And that, remember, ladies and gents, I said at the top of the show, my sim says different, but this is exactly what Chastanoff's on at this point in time. Up 12 spots. He was very, very early on. When did he start this race? I tell you what, it's been an awesome one. 14 spots for Chasty. Now from 19th to 5th. That last time by for Curtis Webb as well. 39.302. Now leads the dry runners as the dry start to take over, Dave. And uh, it seems as if that Fuji rainstorm has we're... come, it's gone, and now we're back to Slicks, boys. So, so Stephen Ball's come out and he's 20 seconds behind the leader. So the, he's effectively lost 20, what, nearly 29 oh, he's seconds. He's oh, whoa, 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 he's gone! On the dry tyres, see? Cold dry tyres, that's the Cold thing, Cold dry tyres, wow. I've done it again, I'm going to stop talking about Peter. <laughs> I wonder whether or not... How, how deep, Dave, do you need to go into this race to cross the fuel over? Um, I reckon he's probably all right now. He's 15 minutes in. He should be OK. So this will be the moment for Steve yeah, He just lost it. Just simply lost it because he hasn't got the grip that he had on the wet tyres because it's still very slippery out there. You know? And tr trying to... Um, trying to just guess the the level of grip and see he's, he's fine and it's just gone because he hasn't got those dry tires hot yet well It'll the critical so factor gentle. now is keep half an eye on james chuston off right 41 244 that time by 2.8 seconds slower than declan webb he's now our lead driver still on those wets and if he's watching stephen bull or at least thinking about the times the thing that's going through his head is there's still too much spray i do not want to strap cold dry tires cold slicks are like driving on ice but the problem is the longer he waits the more he stands to lose yeah and and um talking about uh, christopher island there in seventh christopher in pre-qualifying he was the class of the field he was so fast he was really right up with the pro times um and and would have been on the you know probably the first half dozen of the pros and super super fast He's sitting in seven, he's on dry tyres, and he's just set the fastest lap, so he's a man to watch. Have a look at Chassis responds as they come down through the chicane. It's tight and twisty through there. Got under the preferred line for the wet tyres, and now have a look at the car that's coming through in behind. This is going to be interesting. Oh, it gets tagged! Oh, oh no! That's Matt Morris! Was it Matt Morris? It was! Tags three of them that's all get caught up. Chastanuff and Matt Morris are stuck in this one. And they'll all get and rolling. Maseroli. I think Maseroli was the cause of that, actually. It's on Maseroli the inside. Was. Yeah, on the inside, Maseroli in the red car, and he just touched um, touched um, one of them, and um, and Morris got caught up in it as well. We'll get a replay here. You have a look. These guys are doing a really good job, but he's just he got a run down the inside, and he's just touched. There you go. Bang. And that's it. Taking all of them out. And the, the thing that he probably wouldn't know is that Chastity was on the wet tyre still. He, he would have no idea that he was on so that tyre. he won't tire. be in a minute. And for both of them, it's going to ruin their night. But this is yep. the thing. When the conditions are changeable, you've got to adapt, and you've got to adapt quickly. He committed to the braking zone. And, and the thing is, the grip level changes so much each and every lap. Yeah. And again, we've got Webb and Webb at the front of the race. Interesting. And now... Who's, who out of these guys, who's the first guy there that's made his fuel stop? Well, have to be Stephen Bull. Have to be Stephen Bull. Have to be Stephen Bull. So, he's 32 seconds off the lead. He's not out of this race by any means. I think Stephen's still got a... If, if he's got pace in the, in the dry and gets used to these dry tyres, he's in with a good chance. He's still in with a really good chance. The problem for him now is I reckon he's dropped too far off the transit time through the pit lane was 38 seconds. Now he's too far back, and Curtis Webb is absolutely going for it up front. The problem is he will still be in crossover range because he will still be effectively battling for that second place on road. And now Stephen Bull's going to dive down oh. to the inside of Chris Barnes. He will get to the inside, still hasn't yep. cleared him. Look at the stake the rubber. Yep. It gets the job done. Nice driving by Chris there, just giving him room. He knew he was charging through, and he he had 
lots of pace on, and rather than get involved and block him and you know, get involved in an accident, he's just given him room and live to fight another day. I'm wondering whether or not we didn't say Chris was on the on the wet tyres, so we can confirm that one. So he would still be okay. I tell Whoa! you. Oh, wow. Is he going to save it? Does. Oh, that was a big moment. <laughs> Far out. That was a brown trail at the moment, definitely. Oh. I'd say I'll be saying to the pit crew out now, Dave. Uh, a change of tyres and underwear at the best yes. of uh, He's already been through the line. That was a huge moment. It's so easy to do there. We're trying to really oh, get out. Somebody else's Stephen Casitas, who was on the wet tyre, is round at the last corner as well. There we go. The good thing is there's room to go round here and not hit anything, which is a plus. You know what? Well, I've seen strange things this week. One of them, we were actually talking about NASCAR, how, how convenient that we're going to a track that was nearly designed to host NASCAR. You know they raced on rain tyres at Richmond over the weekend for the first time ever in a championship race? Wow, I didn't know that. So there you go. It was, it was, the whole idea was to make sure that they could get, you know, otherwise they'd have jet blowers, they have so many drying facilities yeah. in NASCAR to try and get the track dry so they can actually go racing on slick tyres. Well, they got racing a couple of hours earlier and uh, 30 laps on the track was more than enough on the wet tyres that would have saved them three hours worth of racing, basically. So, wow. uh, yep, NASCAR's making steps forward, as is Curtis Webb in terms of that fastest lap time. Track continues to dry out, he continues to put a strong case forward for winning this race. And right now, after playing second fiddle to Declan over the last couple of weeks, he now leads the way by nearly five seconds. i tell you what, he, actually it is five seconds for Curtis, so he has adapted uh, the conditions supremely well. They've still got a fuel stop to make. Uh, just keeping half an eye on a few things. Jack Humphreys is now coming down to the lane. I tell you what, we're three wide on the main straight at this point in time. It's going to be Chris oh. Barnes, Hayden Millington, and Aiden Kale who are going at it on the run down to turn number one. It was a huge launch off the final corner for Millington. Gets the nose ahead. Now it's going to be Barnes and Kale who go head to head. So, yeah, yeah, it is those three. My apologies. Thought it wasn't for half a second. Now it's going to be Kale who finally gets the nose ahead. So, Chris Barnes has now lost a couple spots, three spots in the last couple of laps. He's still on wet. Well, Chris is still on wet. Off. So that, that's where they're, they're losing the pace is because they're still on wet. So uh, both both Chris and whoever that is right in front of him, which would be Aiden Kale, are both on wet to weather tyres. So that's why they're, they're not really able... Go around, Stephen Ball, again! Uh, and he's still there. He's got pointed the right way and it's got all his wings on and all its wheels on. So he's still live to fight another day. But you've got to try and keep it pointed the right way. This is the wettest section of the track they're going through right now. You can still see the spray quite strong as they come down to the chicane. Web setting another fastest lap there. All that fuel continues to burn off for Curtis Webb. Steve, that track. Stephen Bull's really making a hard job, a hard, hard day's work of this, isn't he? He had the had it all to his own. Everything going well, and a couple little mistakes and off the road and a spin and a what and now he's I think he's passing here Chris Barnes for the second or third time. Uh, it's making really hard work of it. Uh, so we'll see how far he can get back, but he's certainly making a hard work of it. Is there anybody else in front of him that's already made a pit stop? Yeah, there's a few drivers. No, uh, Millington's in. Millington did come in on lap 10, so that is effectively full position. So he's made a good show of it. Ryan Jones has been through the lane, although that looks like a lap was for damage that was significantly too early. There's more drivers on the radio as well looking to call instance in, so it has just been one of those nights. You've got to have a head on the swivel. <laughs> uh, yes. And that's not because they're driving sideways, but anyway. Um, it's been a pretty wild night, and a great debut for the Silver guys in the wet weather, in the rain. Good place to have the rain, and it so typically rains here at Fuji. You know, we all remember the F1 race there a little while ago with um, the uh, Weber uh, Vettel altercation, let's call it. Um, but, uh, you know, it can rain heavy here. It's just horrendously heavy. Um, and been some big accidents here in the rain over the years. 
How about the bravery of Curtis Webb in the conditions at the moment? As Chris Island now goes to the top of the timing charts. He improves the fastest lap. It was only just set by Curtis Webb. We're going to continue to see that improve as the, the race goes on here. And as the track continues to get drier, right now it's Curtis Webb versus Chris Island in terms of that pace battle. The margin on track between those two drivers is 10 seconds. Curtis Webb has cut his way through a bunch of lap traffic. And Stephen Bull will have a night tonight where he'll look back at the other side of things. He'll think back about it and go, realistically, all I had to do was keep the thing pointing in the right direction. I could have given up quite a significant amount of time, and it was race one. You didn't have to do all that much, but such is the nature of wet-to-dry races. His race isn't over yet. He might still be able to get one foot up on that podium. A bit of luck. I think he deserves it because that was a great start. And on the wet, wet tires oh, at the start, he was supreme. Trish Fitz just about got oh, around. That's, yep, that's another one round. If, everywhere I look, I keep hearing tires screaming uh, as they go around at the moment. What? you got to watch it rejoining because the grass is wet as well. At this point in time, I think Josh Fitt might just come back down the pit and put mud tires on such as Benny's race. Mmm. It's been a uh, eventful evening for these boys, and I think they've learned a lot. It'll be interesting to see if the, the next time they have a wet race, see how they attack that, that one, see how much they've learned tonight, because I think they've all learned something out of this event tonight. Yeah, Lefebvre's just gone around at 100R as well. So uh, that corner is, is causing a significant amount of, uh, of issues as it currently stands. Um, yeah, just... And somebody else has just gone around. Oh, I have no that, idea who it was. There we go. It was more in the out of the last corner. And that's Josh that, Fitt, I think, again. Yep. The thing is, that if these guys... Just take a half a second off your lap time. Just a half a second off your lap time. Just slow it down a little bit and keep circulating. You'll be at the top of that tree. Because all these guys, they're pushing for that last little bit. They're having an off. They're having a spin. They're hitting the fence. Their night's done when they do that. You gotta keep it pointed the right way, boys. And I, I think the big note that everyone is is taking is uh, temperature, temperature, temperature. Yeah, cold, colds. Changing to slicks is fine, but they're cold. You gotta give them time to get warm, and you gotta drive really gently on those opening couple of laps. I know when I went out with the guys this week in here, and I jumped onto the, I was the first man on slicks because I wanted to see what it was like, so I'd have an understanding. And it was diabolical, but it wasn't too bad. You could keep it pointed the right way, but you just didn't have the pace. You have to let the track dry, and the pace will come to you. You can't force force the pace. So uh, I think that's where these guys have come undone a little bit tonight. They're trying to force the pace rather than letting the race, and they've got to look at that in the background, um, no, uh, uh, letting the Hyden? race come to them. It was, uh, Luke Hyden is, is the driver that's gone around. I think in one of the incidents that's just going on there. So it's Luke Hyden and Luke Fit are the two cars that are just involved in that incident. We're just having a look at my word. See, you, you sit here and the, the majority of drivers would have partaken in, in, in the spring 12 hour and rain was such a significant aspect to that. But the difference between open wheel cars, prototypes and uh, GT3 racing action is, well, GT3s have got all that body roll. So they, they actually handle the conditions quite well. They've got ABS, they've got traction control. They're actually not too far off. Um, there's ABS in terms of things in... Um, in the GTP cars as well, uh, and the LMP2s have, have uh, got a little bit of, sorry, not ABS, uh, traction control in uh, the GTPs and traction control in the LMP2. Th this is raw racing. There is no driver assists here. Now, look at there. Also, Harry Lawrence, he was really struggling during the week on the rain, trying to come to grips with it again. Up there in P2, what a great job he's done tonight. And he's one of those guys who I haven't seen him round. I haven't seen him pointing the wrong way. He's kept it going the right way all night so far. Touch wood. I don't want to put the coshes on him like I did everyone else. But great job by Harry. <laughs> well, if uh, if he goes around from here, Dave, uh, I know where to send the check. <laughs> yeah. The bill for the car repairs. <laughs> oh, somebody else is off again. Is it Mazzaroli? I think it might be Mazzaroli. Yeah, it is. Mazzaroli, you can pick him a mile away in that bright red car. And then there's the spray again. This is a little bit offline. My yep. word. 
That's uh, that's Cooper trying to come down the inside, and there's a bit of a turn in there. Well, not a lot of room given there. So the update on Harry Lawrence was he actually hadn't been to the pit lane as of yet, and he'll take that opportunity right now as Aaron Cooper dives it through. He gets underneath of Lamb New and and gets the job done there. Cooper, remember, leads this championship, but at the moment. If they leave as they currently stand, it'll be Curtis Webb who might lead the way. But uh, the problem for him, a little bit he down on points yet. towards the... He has. Both him and Declan have now completed their stops. Just wow. about everyone. Reese Margetts and Lamb Newen are the last two. And they are in now. So that is going to resolve the last of our pit stops and get your field cleansed. And in order, and we're looking about, lead. we've got about two minutes to go. Oh, they nearly made it. Yeah. So we've still got one guy out there, Aiden Kale, is still out there um, lapping on wets. Apparently. Uh, I would say that's a mistake. Nope. From him. They went tyres. <laughs> oh, I'm agreeing that they went tyres. <laughs> I, I, I think he's made a mistake there in leading those on. Well, I, I think probably because he hasn't gone to the pit. Has he gone to the pit yet? He has had a pit. Okay. That's strange to come back out on wet. Okay. What's the radar? I don't see any rain coming. Doesn't look like it. Looks like a nice no, sunny strong. day now. It's too late for it to impact the race anyway. Even if it came bucketing down right now, you'd stay out. Surely. Yeah, You're not heating those tyres. Up for the meantime, yeah, no. battles clear. on. By the way, Dave, battles on for the back end of the top 10. 9th, 10th, and 11th. The last of the points paying positions is P10, remember. Formula One style points positions. It is going to be Harry Lawrence that leads the way from Robbie Griffiths and Aaron Cooper. Sits on the outside of the points. Two out of these three drivers will score. And look at how much spray is offline. Now it's going to be Cooper who gets to the right hand side. Harry Lawrence is going to give him a whole bunch of time. And as it currently stands, Griffith now outside the points. Cooper, he's got to pull this car up when they get to turn oh. one. Merges back into the racing line. Look at the drivers lurking in the background. Cooper's deep on the run down to turn number one. Pulls it up nice and artfully. Gets away with that one. And now he might just pick off Harry Lawrence, you know. Couple more points, couple more positions. Let's hope there's a mistake up ahead for Aaron Cooper's shoes. He might just walk away with retaining that championship lead. Yeah, they actually pay points to the top 15 here. And uh, so Luke Hyden's our last point scorer at the moment. And uh, Mazzaroli's still in there at 12th. We've seen him backwards so often this evening, and he's already, you know, he, he's not already, but he's still there. He's still there in 12th place, even though he hasn't been heading forwards all night. And it uh, looks like Curtis Webb coming up the line, is it? Yeah, and that, that is our, over. That's our finish line. And Curtis Webb, what a great job. And it's interesting to see here and Declan Webb take one, two, when earlier in the first few rounds they've led all the way and they've lost out on strategy and tonight they nailed the wet weather conditions well it wasn't even on strategy here tonight we'll have to keep our eyes on this battle because it's still not over cooper is still trying to get to harry lawrence that one's not yet been decided griffiths lurks there watches on and waits for drama to unfold can they both get to the power clean the other last corner they can it is a long long run from here to the start finish line but aaron cooper is nearly too far back He's going to do some toe breaking as Harry Lawrence, and I think he's just about got the job done. He'll lurk, he'll get closer, but he's going to be out of time as Barney waves the flag. It's going to be Lawrence home in ninth, Aaron Cooper in tenth, but it was all domination by Curtis Webb and Declan Webb as they mastered the art of keeping it on the island in changeable conditions. Tire temperature was so key tonight, and they finally get it done on. They've, how many rate they've, they've dominated both of the season openers yep. the first two rounds of this season they have been the class of the field in terms of pace and they have not caught a stroke of luck tonight they didn't necessarily dominate in terms of pace early on but they were on the right size in the right place when it mattered and kept the car on the island and i find that really interesting because as i said in pre-qualifying declan was second quickest but you know curtis was stuck back in the middle of the pack back 14th quickest qualifier and really struggling to find pace around here what a great job he's done tonight yeah and uh we'll get an opportunity to talk to them uh afterwards but in the meantime but that was just such a cracking the thing about rain 
And I think the, the key thing is that you've got so many sim-only drivers out here. There's not a lot of these guys who, who run in the real world. Everyone is still taking to water, shall we say. Yeah, I, I think it's really good. They've done a really good job with the way they've brought it in, the way it's not just, it doesn't just rain everywhere. You know, um, the, there's light rain, there's heavy rain, the, con the, the way it changes, the way the track isn't all just wet, the way it's got drying lines and slippery parts and dry parts and puddles. And, you know, it, it really is a fabulous job that iRacing have done. And, I, you know, I've done a bit of racing, real racing in the wet weather. and. It, it's it's incredibly accurate. I think there's a couple of little things that they they can work on. I think there's a bit maybe a bit too much grip offline in breaking areas and things. But yeah, you know, they're really minor minor things. They've done such a good job of absolute yeah you know, ten out of ten for a first release. Unbelievable, and you can see how much everyone's enjoying it. Yeah, those are your results from 18 laps here tonight in the 30 minutes. Curtis Webb from Declan Webb. Chris Island will round out uh, getting the chockies here tonight. Stephen Ball will finish fourth, but it will be a night where what could have been. He got out to a 10-second lead and threw it all away. Hayden Millington gets home in fifth. Matt Morris saw him back, which still comes home with sixth spot. David Baz from Ryan Jones. Harry Lawrence and Aaron Cooper. What a battle to the line that one was to round out your top 10. Throw it over the page. Matt Zaroli, my word, how many times did he look more like a blade blade than a race car? Tonight, we'll come home in 11th. Robbie Griffiths in 12th. So Griffiths lost that spot on the last lap of the race. Jack Humphreys from Luke Fit. Luke Hyden, the last point scoring car. Lefeba will feel a little bit hard done by in 16th. Mm. Callan Arthur, Tyler Blackburn, James Chastanoff. Oh, that was a huge opportunity for points for Chasty. And Alex Stelbovic will round out your top 20. Four, we'll throw it over the page. Outside your 20 is going to be Damien Cairns from Reese Margetts, Chris Barnes, Max Fry, Mam Nguyen, Aiden Kale could have had an opportunity tonight. Leith Hardy and Stephen Casadas not on the lead lap. Josh Fit, Callum Newton, your non finishes. Ooh, well, that was a great debut for, for the Silver Boys in Rain, and I thought they did a fabulous job of handling it. So. Well, we've got an opportunity quickly to chat to tonight's race winner from the silver class, and it is going to be Curtis Webb. Kurt, it's it's been a few weeks where we've sat here and gone, either you or Declan should have been winning those races. You finally get the job done. Yeah, I was not I was not expecting out of all of them to win it. This the rain was so so sketchy at the start. I I, I probably almost crashed like ten times in the first three laps, but I held it together and got the strategy right for once and yeah, it was good very fun race <laughs> that's just the thing it's been the luck of the draw the last couple of weeks and tonight was probably the hardest of all three of them because you physically had to just keep that car pointing in the right direction that was what it was all about here tonight i mean slick tires at that start that's a huge huge risk did you think it was there any stage in the middle there we went i've made the wrong call here oh for like the first first maybe three laps yeah because i saw the gap I saw the gap the leader pulled. He was like 11, 12 seconds in the west. I was like, oh, I should have, should have gone the wet, but no, nah, it was, yeah, it was good. I pulled back the time at the end of the race. So yeah, it was good. Good call in the end, but yeah, it did not seem like the right call at the start. How was the bravery as the night went on as well? Because obviously that, that temperature, that, that tire condition just slowly kept coming to you. It, 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 sometimes it's very, very easy to just push that margin a little bit too far. How were you talking to yourself when you realized you had quite a significant margin? Oh, I just had to tell myself to calm down and just just try cruise to the line. Cause I just, in the last, on the last lap, I literally almost crashed. Cause I tried to, I tried to get the fastest lap, but I went wide and went on a wet curve and almost just ruined my race like that. So I just, yeah, I just had to keep, keep control and tell myself not to push too much. We actually just saw that on uh, on the replay. I saw that shot and I thought, oh my God, how did you keep that thing going? So congratulations here tonight, Curtis. And uh, floor's all yours to thank everyone you'd like to thank. Yeah, thanks, boys. I'd like to thank my brother, Declan. And uh, thanks to all the competitors. It was great competition. And thanks to you guys for setting this up. It's a really good series, yeah. Well, mate, thank you very much. It's been exciting to have you part of the coverage thus far, and it's made for some really, really interesting racing. We'll see you again next week. Good luck then. Oh, yep. Sorry, two weeks' time. Week. My apologies. Two weeks' time, yep. Yeah.
Well, Dave, that's going to wrap it up from F3A Silver. We might just step away for just a couple moments and uh, reset ourselves because qualifying is just about done from F3A Pro. We're going to have 30 cars, 15 two driver teams to go side by side of racing action. I've been talking to a ton of the drivers, but I can tell you right now, it's Kalen Chin that's got the way forward in qualifying. We'll have to see how that evolves as night progresses. We're back in just a couple of moments. Racing isn't easy but experiencing it is. iRacing puts you in the driver's seat with the industry's leading sim racing game. Drive on laser scan replicas of the greatest racing circuits from around the world. Go head to head against other drivers chosen by skill-based matchmaking to ensure competitive racing at every level. Compete across all your favorite series. In officially licensed cars, engineered to deliver the most accurate driving experience possible. Join a race or host your own with players from across the globe. Race against the computer or in a league with friends. Feel the thrill behind the wheel. Visit iRacing.com. Welcome back, ladies and gents. Thanks for giving us a moment to quickly catch our breath because I think we needed it after that first F3A Silver race. We are now done with the qualifications in terms of our pro drivers and we'll be jumping to the grid. It's 30 drivers to take the field for the F3A Pro. Uh, in terms of the leaderboard, Daniel Harris currently leads the way in terms of the driver points, but it's only four points between him and Kalen Chin. The key factor though, Dave, is that everything is decided not by your individual driver standings, but the money, all the bickies, all the prizes goes to the team standings. And that's what it's all about. Correct. And uh, yeah, it, it's not just about having the your, your one driver at the front. The second guy's got to be up there. He's got to, you've got to both be scoring points. And that's where Fiercely Forward have done really well so far. Both um, Daniel and Lee Zoltweger have done a really, really good job of both scoring points. So Eclipse are there.
running performance in that car. More of a million motorsports cars as well. The lights are starting to come on. The revs are going to rise. That's our 30 as we round it out on the run down at turn number one for the first time here tonight for F3A Pro. Dry conditions. Who's got the run? Kalen Shin gets a good getaway, but immediately has to cover. You've got two on the run down at turn number one. Where do they all work out? It's going to be the two fiercely forward drivers side by side, but then it's going to be Williams and Baker who dive it in very deep as they run to turn number one. Chin from Davison. Then it's going to be Harris who's on the left hand side of that shot, but it'll be Lee. Zeltwang who gets to his inside. Harris looking to slot in nice and easily in behind. Couldn't quite manufacture that one straight away, but now they've got that one together. I tell you what, the fiercely forward drivers are very, very confident in their teamwork. They know what's required to achieve victory here tonight, and they're going to have to go after it. Kobe Williams dives to the inside down there, gets the job done. Harris slots one spot further back. Can Zeltwinger go with the leaders? What is Kobe Williams going to do? Because Harris is coming straight back at him. Gets a huge throw. Forced the crisscross. Forced back to the outside. Harris is going to go down alongside Kobe Williams as they get to the hairpin and into the chicane, deep in under brakes. Will get to the inside. He comes and gets the job done. Finally gets that spot back. And it was ha Williams who got the job done for a couple corners. Harris waited no time in getting back there. The um, they're pretty serious and pretty cutthroat there on that opening lap. They're racing like there's only a five laps in the race. They've got half an hour. They've got 45 minutes to go. Go. Well, in the meantime, Kalen Shin is trying to skip clear. In fact, he's already broken the toe out in front, which means Denny Davison might be a little bit under threat. There was some debate as well. How full do you get this car? Because if you want to swap your tyres, you can be sat there stuck in the pit lane covering that off and Daniel Harris is now getting assaulted he tried to cover it all the way to the pit wall still left a little bit of room that's allowed Kobe Williams to get back to the inside Ewan Baker's going to try and make a three wide as they get into turn one Harris was deep under the brakes had a big old wiggle Kobe Williams pulled it up but Harris hangs on to the spot have a look at Saltwanger as well keep an eye on these guys it's not going away anytime soon Williams is still trying to hold off Ewan Baker the dirty air is hugely strong here as they come through turn number three my word they are kicking on with the, with the open setup so they've all got different setups out here scott and uh, you're going to find some of these guys have trimmed the thing right out in a super fast and straight line it looks to me like the fiercely forward guys are maybe even down a little bit in straight line speed just for a change well there's a little bit of a discussion about the rundown of turn number one and the breakings of a couple of cars oh huge moment you and baker's gonna tag williams they're both around you and baker is tag kobe williams and he's facing in the wrong direction you and baker is riding on a front wing and he's gonna have to come to the pit lane and that has taken them both out of contention oh that's a shocker really bad to see i'm gonna say eddie beswick there sitting in eighth place i'm gonna tell you a little something eddie won the first round of the australian formula ford series last weekend at bathurst and he is leading the australian formula ford championship so you've got a real racer out there with some real knowledge and it's gonna be great to watch him and see how he goes in this field let alone formula forwards at this racetrack if you're gonna get the race craft from anywhere and you can oh. just see it you will make a huge rear lock up the car danced yep. all over the place nothing he could have done he was committed at that point that's a lot of damage on Kobe Williams' car. Ewan will be distraught that he's done that. That's not the way he races. It's just lost it under brakes. The rear end just lost it. I'm really curious to see what happens from this now front pack as we're going to see a ton of cars come to the pit lane to, to handle that damage. Who's that Sam Chapman there with wheels hanging off it as well, I can see. Oh, yep. oh my word, that's a turn one? It is. It's the outside of turn one. So he's got a whole lap to get back he's around. He's hit something. I don't know what he hit, but he's hit something. Here we go. Going to go to a replay here. We'll see what he hit. I'm guessing it's another car would be my my shot. But because there's not a lot of wall there. Oh, no, he's hit the wall. Yep, lost. Again, same thing. Hard under brakes. They've got a lot of rear... They've got a lot of rear brake on these cars so that they can get it to rotate in the tight corners. And that's just happening there. Zone missed the braking zone, locked up, and they're locking the rears first, and then she's stepping sideways, which is exactly what happened to you and Baker as well. You've got to run a lot of rear... God, that looks ridiculous. Looks like that uh, Nissan uh, um, um, Le Mans car from a few years ago. Uh, I was going to say, but... uh, Michael Schumacher's Ferrari in the wet at Spa? Yeah, yeah, that one, yeah. That's, uh, that's what it reminds me of in the meantime. Oh, the, what was that Nissan thing with the little tiny front wheels and the and the big wide rear wheels? The other one I'm thinking of. Yep. Yep. Uh, 
<sighs> so here we go. Or oh, now. Who's this? This is Zeltwanger down the inside of Harris. No, so, actually the other way around. It's Harris down the it? inside of Zeltwanger. Well, they both look the same. <laughs> but I think you're right. I think they actually are running just a touch more front wing. So it's through this middle sector of the lap where they're supremely quick because they've lost a ton of time right here to Danny Davison. Kalen Chin is still trying to skip as clear as he possibly can. So strategy is going to play its, uh, its part here tonight, ladies and gents. And I can tell you, over the duration of a fuel run, which is fuel limited, will not be the entirety of the 45 minutes, they'll be required to come to the pit lane. Basically, you're looking about 40% worth of tyre wear. 35 to 40% worth of tyre wear. So that is putting a significant load on the tyres. There is a point in this race where if you can get it far enough in, the tyres will absolutely make a difference. But the problem is you lose significant amounts of time. It's about an extra three or four seconds on the pit stop to take it. Plus, it takes you three laps to get them warm again. Oh, even That's... more in the water. Yep, there we go. Yep. There's more info that I didn't even consider. Yeah, no, because you don't come out with hot tyres. They come out quite cold and they're really off the pace for about three laps. So it's probably lap four before you've really got real pace out of them. So you'll lose another five, six seconds. That's, that's, you know, that's a bit people don't necessarily count. But looking at this now, Kalen Chin's done a great job cruising along out front, got the fastest lap, and he's certainly got some pace. But in, what a great job from Danny Davison. But the thing is, this is a team's championship, as we said, and look at those fiercely forward guys, third and fourth, running in formation, that's big points for those boys. There's, um, that's Beswick, is it? Looks like Bez... Yeah, yep. so Eddie, Eddie Beswick moves from seventh up to sixth. Daniel Harris was very, very wide on uh, Coke Corner. Kobe Williams, by the way, he's done. Done for the day. Well, that, that's, um, that's a pity because that means their team are uh, really going to struggle to score points. So that's... Um, yeah. He's in the Eclipse Sim Sports 5 6 entry. Yeah, uh, so with Beswick. So, as much as Eddie's doing such a good job there in sixth place, yeah, they've only got one point scorer tonight because of um, that, that's it. Okay, the chin is going to put a significant amount of points. So, so, to keep in the back of your mind, guys, this is what the team sort of look like in terms of things. The Fiercewood forward drivers, uh, Daniel Harris and Lee Zeltwanger, uh, they lead the way in terms of the championship standings currently. Eclipse Sim Sports, now that's Eclipse Sim Sports without any additional text in their, in their team name field, is Kalen Chin and Caleb Hides. So, uh, the. The K and C combination. They just need an F in the middle somewhere there. Uh, and uh, they will be taking home the chicken dinner if uh, Kalen Shin can win this one. Remember, he won round number one in the wet race at Magello. But same thing from there. Caleb Hines didn't score a boatload of points. That's why they're deep in. The team that's consistently been there and thereabouts has so far been the fiercely forward guys. But Zeltwanger had a disastrous round number one in the wet conditions. If we continue to see rain make its way into the calendar, expect the fiercely forward guys to struggle that's where they'll fall off the apple cart yeah you know the other thing here tonight and as we've just seen with uh, caleb with um um whatever um there's no <laughs> fast there's no fast repairs this is the pro series you don't get a fast repair you damage the car just like the real world you're out of the race so unless the pit crew can make a repair you don't get a fast repair well, the difference being to everyone who's watching along at home would be saying, well, hang on, what happened to you and Baker? Well, the thing about front wings is, well, they're replaceable. Yeah, so there'll be a delay. He'll be in the pit lane. It might take a minute or two to fix, even. But that's all. Now, Eddie Beswick's missed the, missed the chicane there, so he'll get a slowdown. So he lost, he missed the chicane and took the shortcut through. So he'll definitely get a slowdown. Yeah, he has got a slowdown. He did manage to get that one clear. It was Ben Roberts who was starting to assault him and try to go side by side as they came down through 13, 14 and 15. Has got that spot back now, does Eddie Beswick, but he was just off the back of Caleb Hides. He might have been close enough to get draft on this lap. He'll miss out on that as Caleb Hides is actually caught up. And Hides is now starting to crawl onto the back of Lee Zeltwanger, and Zeltwanger's just barely got a sniff of draft on the cars that are ahead of him. And now nice. he's got to keep an eye on Ben Roberts. In the draft. He's got a monstrous toe. The overspeed starts to kick in. He's going to do some saving. Backs out, lifts off just a little bit. So he is really looking to look after his machinery. Probably recognises that Beswick might be a touch faster. He's just going to say, yep, no worries, Eddie. Pull me along. I'd love to be part of that battle that's just down the road. And, and Ben Roberts and Jack Mara, who's behind him. Oh, oh boy, that's a couple of big... 
That's Caleb Black and Sam Sutton. Caleb Network. Yeah, Caleb, Be uh, Caleb Bellack and Sam Sutton. I think that'll be a safety car, I would That's, think. It's in the pit lane exit. Safety That's... car. Yep, we've got a safety car. Uh, just well, on on the side, I can see in the chat room here for the guys from the Silver Race, and they are all just raving about how much fun that was and how fantastic the race was in the in the wet. And even Stephen Bull, who had the thing won and and lost it, is just going, "I had so much fun. That was awesome. Isn't it great to see that response from the guys out there racing, regardless of where they finished? They've just had an absolute ball tonight." I'm really, really curious to see what happens in terms of the fuel strategy right here because Chin backed these yep. guys all the way off. Now, I would have still gone a little bit hammer and tong because I wanted to maintain that margin. He had about two and a half, three seconds worth of lead. That is time that he pit. could... Well, I think they're all going to come. Pitting. Yep, he's pitting. So they're all going to... All these guys are going to pit. Who's the first guy who's not going to pit? And did anyone who had damage early like an Ewan Baker if he's still on the road is Ewan still out there if he is and he repaired the front wing did he take fuel can he make it to the end without a stop mm. now and could he come back through well I, I, I you won't look be able at to make this it madness in the pit lane <laughs> well yeah F3 I mean absolute how madness you... in the pit lane are you this is in F3? Chaos. Oh, look at them all go and the fiercely forward yeah, yeah. guys are taking tires look at the guys at the front end of town are they going to lose Look a couple of spots here? Harris is going to get back out just in front of Jack Mara, but he's going to lose a spot to Ben Roberts, and the tyres are going to be stone cold. And the other thing is, Zeltwinger, I think, took tyres, but he was in there a very, very... Zeltwinger's still in the lane. He's spared. Something's happened to Zeltwinger. What's he done? He's still in the lane. Has he sped in the lane? Has he missed the pit lane speed limiter? Unsafe entry, perhaps? Or did he? It yeah, the line. I... I've, I've just seen it. He's crossed the pit lane entry line. He was on the left-hand side of the white line <sighs> at the pit lane entry as it started. Boy, oh and boy. And with Fuji, you must have all four wheels to the right-hand side of the pit lane blend line. You might. It was right at the very start of the line, and the reason why. Here we go. Here we go. We're on board. We're on board. Him. Watch this. We're... You'll hear it as well. Caleb Hyde's going to zoom up on his right-hand side. Yeah, so he's over the line. Uh-uh. No, no. Cannot do that. Wow. Oh. Well, they're side by side in pit lane there. <laughs> well, that's Caleb Hyde's in behind him. I think it was Eddie Beswick was the other car. Indeed, it was. And... And there was a fair bit of debate on the radio. Both of those drivers were not happy with each other. Well, there's a lot of road out there they could be on. I don't know why they were in the same bit in the middle of the road, trying to get a bit of side draft, I imagine. Don't Danny, da Danny Davis has done a nice little job here. Stayed in his second place. So Kalen Chin's back, and he's jumped Kalen Chin in that pit stop. So Danny Davis did an awesome job. I don't think Lachlan Taylor came in. I think he stayed out, didn't he? And then Ben Roberts has also done an, a good job, and he's also jumped Daniel Harris. And so then Jack, Jack Mara's up to six. So a bit of uh, swapping around there. There's a fair bit to break down in this, and I'll give you I'll give you the update. So uh, safety car's just about to pull away. We've got a few moments to sort of discuss things. As it stands, Lachlan Taylor, who leads the race, has not pitted. Yep. Um, as the safety car's actually pulled away, and now we will go back to green flag racing. Danny Davison, no tyres taken. Kaylin Shin took tyres. Ben Roberts, no tyres. Daniel Harris took tyres. Jack Mara, no tyres. Eddie Beswick took tyres. So there's a various amount of strategy up and down the pit lane Ooh. as they go on the run down to turn number one. Are these guys are on cold tyres. Dan Harris and Kaylin Shin. Taylor goes around the outside. Let's all three of them through. He's going to let Roberts cut his way back through underneath them as well. But it's still side by side. Danny Davison grabs the lead of this race, but he's on older rubber. How 
long will that last? And now Harris looks for the crisscross, doesn't quite get there. Gets a touch of contact on the Reba Bridgin. Now Robert senses an opportunity as they head through the center of the lap. The 100R corner, the nearly triple apex, and now they'll have to stop it as the cold tires are still strong then come up to temperature. Ben Roberts is closing in, has a little bit more tire temperature and pressure, but Davison's got to the lead, and he is attempting to set sail as the fresh rubber behind him struggles to come up to temperature. The Lachlan Taylor's just dropped right back. He's lost six spots there. He's back to seventh place as the leading at that restart, but uh, not having t taken a pit stop. So he's he's out of contention right now. This top group of six cars, Davison, Chin, Harris, Roberts, Beswick, and Mara. Oh. Yeah, hold on now. Ben oh, Roberts has made a mistake there. And oh, they have made contact. Oh, and they over the turtles. Oh, over the turtles. I think they were sausage dogs. <laughs> <laughs> oh my word they better be something food related crocodiles is more like it i swear to god i eat a whole bunch of them every time i come to jack Fuji mara race car. jack mara smells blood here he's right on the back of ben roberts and now he's it's getting double draft. he's getting blocked in see they're getting blocked in with the toe somebody comes up and they're blocked in behind so now they're going to go and try and go three four abreast down into this first corner big dive down the inside and it's going to be Caleb Hyde. Nice Let's move. We'll get it from oh. Beswick. Beswick oh. is out Beswick the grass. Out the grass. Ben Roberts tries to hang on to things. Here comes Jack Mara who resurges around the outside. Mara goes back to fifth. He was seventh at the end of turn one. Back to fifth. Beswick got the best of the lot of them. And now he sits at the background. Wow. That was a beautiful move. Opportunistic driving by Jack Mara around the outside. Sweet. My word. Can we race at this place every single week? This is this is bonkers. This is absolutely bonkers. There's room for them to get creative, isn't there? There's room for them to get creative on how they can pass down the outside, up the inside. Let's dive up the inside here, two abreast through these tight chicanes. They're just they're creating lines that aren't even there over the turtles or crocodiles, whatever the darn things are. Um, <laughs> they're just using every bit of road they can find, but they've got to be careful again. You know, it's so easy to damage the car on those big, big lumps of concrete. That was somebody shooting off to the right. Sean Doyle, but he saved it. There's room to save it. You can make mistakes around here and get away with it. So that makes you try hard. Now there's Zeltwanger coming back through. Where is he? A long way a back. Ton of ground. He was at 21st at the start of the lap. Now he's up to 19th. It might be 18th before they get much further down the straight. He's going to block in Nathan. Uh, sorry, Sean Doyle. He goes flying past. Now it's Nathan Norman. Now Doyle's going to try and cross over the track and follow him. Gets a touch of draft. We'll get help. We'll get some assistance. Self wing against the both of them up to P17. Now he's going to keep the eyes going forward, but down to the Whoa. inside goes Sean Doyle. Has another dive nice in. Self winger will get the drive out the other side. Two for one on the run down the main straightaway. I love where they're just leaving just enough room. They're not cramping each other. They're not hitting each other. And he, he was aware he was down the inside, left the room, and both of them lived to fight on. Great to watch. Oh, and now zeltwinger has got another pack up ahead of him, including Lachlan Taylor, who did not pit. He'll have Scott Barton and Corey Bennett is in that pack up ahead. There is so much going on. I, I said keep my head on a swivel earlier. I think I need three heads to keep track of the action. Yeah, and Danny Davis is still hanging on there. He's got six, or oh, about six tenths of a second. So, Kalen Chin's his little shadow in behind. Um, they pulled that little bit of gap there back to Harris. Um, it looked at the moment like Davison's had good pace here. He, he was second on the grid with Kalen Chin. These two guys were the fastest guys out there in qualifying, and it looks like they're going to be the fa they're the fastest two guys in the race as well. Harris doing a great job hanging in there. Pity he's lost his. Uh, his cohort because they were looking really strong on on um, team points. But uh, who's Davison's teammate? Who's Danny Davison's teammate? Now I'm going to look up my sheet here. I'm going to tell you, it is Scott Bartain. Now where's Scott? Scott's back in 14th. That's not a bad effort. Now there's Chin down the inside of Davison. He's got the pace. Kalen Chin has just got the pace. He's got fresher up at Sue, which is absolutely, yep. we, we heard, you know, there was a bit of discussion about how hard uh, Fuji does work the tyres this night. Speaking of Bartain, he's going to have Lee Zeltwanger crawling all over his uh, his gearbox probably halfway through this lap. And he's looking at Caleb Dawson, Kenny Konomis, who are going battling just up the road as well. By the way, Kenny Konomis, plus 18 as it currently stands. Uh, so he is having a reasonable night, as is Tyson Broad, is plus 10. As Beswick just stands. falling down. 
Beswick just disappeared down. Oh, there he is. I, I can see he's been involved in an altercation on another part of the track. But Eddie Beswick has just fallen down, down that leaderboard, crashed down that leaderboard. He's got something he's got broken. I, you know, will he be able to fix that? Not sure. The left front corner of his car and Shane Doyle's slow as well. So something's happened to Zoya, Doyle, whether or not that was uh, self-inflicted. We might have an update. Yeah, we might get a replay even in a minute if we're lucky. But that, um, that, that's a pity because uh, Beswick had put up a really good showing. To, oh, somebody's spearing off there on the right-hand side. Beswick. Where's Beswick? Yes. Oh, look. He's, so he's lost it on the grass. Come and he's, Oh, that's hard into the wall. We've got another crest to toe too. And it's Kobe Williams. Did you get back oh, out the there? pair! The oh, whole, no! Oh. Wow! Yep. So. Wow. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you all the meatball flags we currently have, and that's drivers who are required to come in the pit lane and serve their repairs. Caleb Bellack and Sam Sutton. We saw that incident that triggered the safety car. Uh, then it's Sean Doyle, Eddie Beswick. Kobe Williams, all three of those guys. My word! What is going? Is there a different driving regulations when you come to Japan? Because it's something absurd has happened tonight. I think it's just it's just that. Oh, there we go. Same thing again. Exactly the same thing as uh, Beswick's. But he's managed to pull it up before he found the fence. So Caleb Dawson. But exactly the same. They're getting wide. They're getting over that curb. Car stepping out sideways and just spearing off at the wall. Lucky there's plenty of room there, but uh, not enough room, unfortunately, for Eddie Beswick. Oh, there's so much going on. Now it's going to be, uh, I believe it's Drew Collins and Ben Holiday going side by side as they come down. It's just, yeah, there's, there's stuff going on just about everywhere. Keep an eye on Zeltwanger as well. He's up to 12th after restarting at the tail end of the field after that penalty. So he's, you know, oh, cut oh. his way through a ton of traffic. There's another car around. It's Ben Holiday. Ben Holiday. And that allows Zeltwanger to slide into 11th. So I think Zeltwanger's probably, what, plus 16 since the restart? Yeah. He'll be kicking himself that white line. It'd be in contention. They'd be they'd be leading the team's championship and jumping mm. away. If, and I like uh, I I personally really like this. That there's no fast repair. You have an accident, you got damage, and you got to go to the pit lane and you got to try and get it fixed. And if it's too much damage, you're out of the race. It brings that element of reality into this. It's something we haven't seen a lot in sim racing because everyone's just used to pressing the button and going, "I'll reset. I'm back out there." You know, I like this. The good thing is you still don't have to pay for the damage. <laughs> I'd never be a race car driver, and the reason why, my repair bill would be too high. That is uh, that is the sole reason, Dave. Uh, but as it stands, I went back and had a look. Zeltwanger restarted 24th. He is yeah. 10th. Yeah. My word, what's some pace at the moment. Kalen Chins continues to lead the way. That fresh rubber is really paying dividends up at the front end of town, and Daniel Harris is starting to come back at Denny Davison. The next question I'll ask you here, Dave, is do you think, from that safety car about 10 minutes in, do you think they can make it to home? I don't know. I have no idea. I think that it depends on, you know, they had a little bit of time behind the safety car. It wasn't a lot. Uh, they've had no wet weather running, which uses a lot less fuel. I would think they're pretty heavy on fuel. Who's that running around without a rear wing? One of the 75 cents cars, no rear wing on it. Um, the, but I, I would think that they'd be struggling to get there from that point. It'd be very close. You'd have to clutch and be very, very careful. With it. Well, Maybe. consider right now Daniel Harris, who sits in behind Denny Davison. He, uh, he has closed over the last couple laps. Caitlin Chin's just disappearing. So Chin would absolutely be um, aware to any fuel game. So he's basically saying it's not possible, it's undoable, or I can definitely make it just with his pace. Harris, though, if Harris sits here behind Danny Davison and this becomes a fuel race, all of a sudden that changes things. Uh, I don't know, because iRacing doesn't model fuel usage like uh, the real world. You don't really get that much of a gain from being in the tow. Um, and short shifting and things doesn't seem to make a lot of difference to the fuel usage. The only thing that makes difference is clutching and uh, coasting. 
So, you know, lifting coast into corners and, and pushing the clutch in and, and letting the car idle, that saves a bit of fuel. But you don't save very much by short shifting because it registers how hard you got the pedal down rather than actually how much fuel you're using or how many revs you got on. It's very interesting. I don't know the details of it, but I, I, I know what I have tested myself and definitely seems to work, respond to how hard you got the pedal pushed down rather than yeah, you know, like in a real car, you short shift to save fuel. As it currently stands, uh, it looks like they might actually be able to make it in terms of fuel, is, is what we're hearing. Um, we, mm. I mean, we, we don't have any information to, to say it's definitely that case. We're just, we're just saying that's the suggestion. It's going to be close. Stands. It's going to be close. Be, yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking as well. There's so much on throttle time around here is the concern that I have in the back of my mind. Uh, change for our second place drivers it will be Daniel Harris will go alongside Denny Davison as they enter Coca-Cola corner kick back to the left hand side and now Harris with fresher rubber underneath him has got control of P number two he'll set the sights after Kalen Chin but Chin has disappeared he is not more than a fleeting shadow slightly seen across your windshield three and a half seconds isn't that far one mistake and you're back in the back right back in uh, you know the race with everybody on your tail so it's not that's you and, you and Baker around the outside. Yeah. Just a couple laps ago, so actually mm -hmm. this was the last lap. Uh, so Lachlan Taylor oh. did actually call this one in to have a look at. and uh, I don't think, I didn't really see any drama there other than, you know, you've got to be cramped on the inside. By the way, there's been a ton of messages come through from Race Control. Every single one of them, bar one, has been no further action. We have only one penalty that's been assigned through the course of this race and that is currently Ewan Baker for an incident on lap number two gets a 10 oh. second time penalty in the Ivy post race and I think Ewan would put his hand up and say yeah I deserve that one he did actually mention in the server yeah look I apologize that's on me yeah yeah and look you can't you know it's really hard when the car's on cold tires and you're not sure and you're driving so hard for everybody to drive perfectly it's never going to happen there's going to be mistakes out there unfortunately sometimes when you make a mistake you involve somebody else Meantime, Harris is making those tyres pay. He's doing more than enough to hang on to this one. But team-wise, where are we looking? Kalen, Ch Kalen Chin. His Caleb Hyde's teammate is Caleb Hyde. So they're looking really good one and four, aren't they? And then Harris and, and Zeltwanger. So that's two and ten. So I would say that tonight, by the look of it, that um, Kalen Chin and Caleb Hyde's in the Eclipse Sim Sports looks like they're the guys who've got the big point game to, tonight for their team. So that, that's a nice job. Danny Davison, we've got Scott Bartain. I mean, Scott's back a bit, isn't he now? Uh, I don't know where he is now. He's dropped right off the board. So 11th, 11th is Bartain. There he is, yeah, yeah, 11th. So that's not bad either. Three and 11, that's really good point scoring. And um, the recovery efforts from Zeltwanger aren't over either. He's yeah. now caught Drew Collins and Tyson Broad's only just ahead of him. Now what happened to Bailey? What happened to Bailey Evans? I have not even seen him tonight. P13 currently, so he's he and Ben Roberts 13 and P5 in um, with their simrigs.com DPR. That's a pretty good effort as well. See, we're seeing that the boys are starting to get the hang of this, where they've both got a score. Pretty good. Jack Mara, you and you and Baker. Jack's doing a great job. You had a tough night, but I think you know. He can hold his head up. He's uh, he's done a pretty good job getting it back there to 14th place. Yeah, well, the big issue for Ewan Baker is he's still got 10 seconds worth of penalties hanging over his head. That safety car certainly helped him out, but it also Whoa. times things up. Now we'll keep our eyes on this one as they go squabbling for it. And Zeltwanger watches on because he's sensing an opportunity to grab a couple more spots. The Broad has now been overtaken by Drew Collins on the run down to turn number one. Huge toe, and Tyson Broad might be struggling with a little bit of tyre wear as she stands currently. We've still got 15 minutes to go, so they're, they're not... You know, it's not over as far as uh, this fuel item either. Are they really going to get there another 15 minutes? Well, according to what we're told, but uh, the pace might be too high. That's, that's something else. Zellwinger coming from the rear, you just go, well, I'm not going to make it in terms of making those positions, so I'm definitely going to make it. So if Zellwinger's pushing on, you can say comfortably, absolutely, you can make it on fuel. Because if there was one driver who would absolutely be fuel saving right now, it'd be Zellwinger. Hmm. 
guy is cruising it's Caleb Chin he's got a four second lead now he's dragging it out further we saw it saw him do this in one of the other um, one of the other rounds where was it Mugello or somewhere wasn't it similar sort of thing just got oh, out yep. in front in the rain he was the rain meister remember so, oh uh, that's a wing that was that's a, wing. a wing oh there it is it's missing off that one Drew Collins is missing it, we're hearing at this point in time. He's going to come to the pit lane, and there's a rear wing missing of Harrison Lillis. And Zeltwanger takes one look at that and says, gee, boys, that was going to be a little bit difficult. Uh, and not there. anymore. And behind him is missing a front wing. So. Here comes Scott Bartain, who's actually going to respond on Zeltwanger on the run down to turn number one. As we see the boys enter pit lane, they're going to go side by side as they get down to turn one. Zeltwanger's going to hang on to another spot. And uh, still trying to crack down on towards Tyson Broad. Reminder, Zeltwanger has got fresh tyres on his car. As soon as he knew he was getting a penalty, that one would have been locked in for sure. Well, let's have a look what happened here. So, Stolo incident, Harrison lost, but the other cars lost the front wings. Ah, oh, there we go. go. Oh, nowhere to go. Oh, what a pity for Drew Collins. That really, really... He didn't deserve that, but he didn't have any options. It was nowhere to go. A difficult a, part of the track. Well, how difficult was that for Zeltwanger? Because he came around the corner and there's a car ahead of him missing a rear wing. He's got no downforce. So you just got to be real careful in those circumstances about how much grip that Oh, that's Ben Roberts round. Yeah, that's Ben Roberts. Roberts round. And he's touched the fence gently, but that's Jack Mara up into fifth place now. So Ben Roberts round, he's gone. It's this, the camber of these corners, you come over brows and the car gets light and it's off camber and it, it's really easy to lose the back end of the car, which is what we, just what we saw Ben Roberts do then. Well, oh, yeah. I was sitting here and thinking, Dave, I think Fiercely Forward might have lost the championship lead tonight. If this keeps up, if well, Zell Wing has got pace on both of the drivers that are just ahead of him, and now Ben Roberts is going to have a huge toe. He's given to Tyson Brewer and Zell Wanger as it currently stands the run down to turn one. He's going to be on hot tyres as Ben Roberts. Those rears will be smoked. Broad gives it up as they get down into under brakes. So one for Lee Zell Wanger. Can he make it two? It won't be in the early sectors of this lap. He might actually just sit here behind Ben Roberts unless he's being held up and say, hey, I'm not going to punch away far enough. I'll get you on the run to turn one next lap, although he's right there and under the gearbox of Ben Roberts. Ben Roberts can barely breathe. He gets to the inside of him, doesn't get enough space. Oh, so the and Roberts taking them both out. Around. That was silly, silly, silly. There was no need for that. Didn't need but, to do uh, that. No. He absolutely did not need to do that. He was going to get him somewhere. Yep. And he's that's probably, where a bit ahead just goes, he's yeah, probably I'll gonna get, him get himself a I'd be thinking he's probably going to get himself a little uh, penalty there for that one. That was just a needless exercise. You know, Ben had the cover, corner covered. He just ran straight in the back of him and put them both around in a circle. Silly, silly. And could have damaged both cars. Could have put them both out of the race. Well, the preferred line through that corner is to the to the right-hand side of the road. You, you generally yep. don't open up that up. And then the other problem with that for Zeltwanger is I'd be crisscrossing him and getting down the inside of the next corner, the hairpin. It's just, yeah, it's I, don't, I don't know what he was crosses. planning there. Anyway, it was red mist is what that was. Well, with, it, with his, how his night's going, you can't blame him for red mist. Silly nah. mistake leads to brain fades is generally the way they... Have a look at Scott Barton, by the way. The other the thing, seventh. what he what he probably should have done there is, after what happened, is he should probably redress that. Well, he's already gone on with it, so it's too late now. Yep. Uh, I, can, yeah, I can tell uh, you, watch to the inside here. This this lane is just never going to open up. No, I would have lifted out significantly that was just, earlier. Yep, yeah, that was just needless. Really needless. You're not going to pass the guy there. You're not talking about some tail end here trying to go by. It's a 10 second penalty that's just been issued to Lee Zeltwanger for that one as well. I told you. Told you. I used to sit in race control, see. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, just know when you come from behind like that and you turn two people around and then you don't even stop and wait and redress it to say, shit, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. It's too late. Um, I, 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 don't, I don't think the redress would have avoided the penalty. They'd lost too much time. I think if he'd redressed it, he may have got a five-second penalty instead of a ten. I would have taken that. Ben Roberts, how far back down the road is he? It's not five seconds. So, yeah, you'd be mm. right. You're making a guess. So it's effectively still a 10 second penalty either way. So, yep. even if it was only five minutes, it's just silly. Didn't need to happen. 
and uh, that is the difference between being successful. Uh, that is the difference, I think, Dave, between somebody who you sit here and you say is probably clinical, is knowing when to press the event. Because if I'm in Lee Zeltwanger's shoes and I've got that much pace, the other side of the coin is Ben Roberts was going to blitz him on the straight. So there was no reason for it. Now can, he's going to get another opportunity on the run in turn number one. I'm going to say, this is, this is where we've seen um, Jack Mara be really good. Jack's a very, he rarely gets that red mist and he'll he just uh, pace himself, keep the car clean, keep it straight and stay in the race and score points after points after points. And the other guy who's done that tonight is Danny Davison. We saw him when he got mm. involved there with Daniel Harris and he just gave it away. He said, I, I don't have the pace to be in second place. You're catching me. You're putting moves on me. I'll let you by and I'll sit behind you and see if you can tow me away from the rest of them. And I'll take a safe third rather than fight for a risky second, which could put us both out of the race. That's well, where the smarts are. And I think Danny Davison showed that really well tonight. We said tonight's going to be a night about tyre wear. Danny Davison is hanging out there on extremely old tyres. He only has 10 minutes left to go in this one, under 10 minutes now. But another guy that's sort of snuck underneath the radar and Kane Lynch needs this guy to score points, Caleb Heights. He yeah, they're back. in fourth place. He's done a great job tonight. Quiet achiever, BP quiet achiever. But uh, really nice job. He sat there. We haven't seen much from him. We haven't seen him off the road. We haven't seen him backwards. Touchwood. Um, he's done a great job just keeping it nice and clean and tidy and straight and pointed in the right way. These guys have got to learn to race. And that, they're doing a good job. But there's a few out there that have made big mistakes tonight. And when you don't have a fast repair, those those mistakes are terminal. I can tell you, Denny Davis is starting to struggle on tyres through the middle of the lap. Yep. And uh, Hyde's is starting to come at him. So that, that fresh rub is certainly paying dividends for Caleb Hyde's. As currently said, if he gets third spot, absolutely championship goes the way of the Eclipse Sim Sport drivers. So they will be very, very proud for that. And Caleb Hyde's would love a podium here. That would really G him up start to see some strong performances. Like you said, Jack Mara's having a silent night at the office. Very quiet, achieving drive. Scott Bartain up into six as it currently stands, as Kenny Konomos and Lee Zeltwanger both coming after him. And the key factor for Zeltwanger is he needs to put 10 seconds on guys in the points. So he has got to go hard every lap of the race from here. It's been a strong recovery drive from 24th at the restart. 16 spots gained, but he's going to lose some of them. It's interesting, isn't it? They're all learning like tyre wear and the fuel economy of the car and how much fuel you can save in it. And um, they're learning a lot about this car because it's a brand new car to, to the platform. Um, and, uh, you know, I, it's great to see these tyres where, you know, it's iffy whether you take a set or don't. It's always been before you just didn't need to take tyres. Oh, around goes Tyson Broad. Um, nice save. Um, but, you know, it's always been you just put a put a set of tyres on at the start you drive to finish and they don't wear out. It's great to see these cars using the tyres. Losing the tyres inconsistently. Now the spot for P3 is going to change hands. Hides is going to try and go to the outside, looks for the crisscross. This is where Take some of that little bit of discipline might come to hand. That is a gap that did open up. And now he gets down to the inside of Denny Davison. Davison runs it wide, but now he'll have the inside when they get down here. Deep under brakes going Caleb Hyde. Gets a really good rotation, but how strong was Denny Davison on the mid corner? The problem for these guys is down at the next corner. It's a right handed hairpin, really, really tight corner. And finally, it's going to be Caleb Hyde who puts one step onto the podium, but it's not done yet. Danny Davison is going to be close enough, have enough of a toe, that this could change hands when they get back to turn one. Jack Mara will be saying, please, boys, please, can you keep fighting like that? I'd love some time. Yeah, look, at the, oh, that's a bit wide there from Caleb Hyde. To, he's really stretching this. He doesn't need to. It's about a team points. There's a couple extra points aren't going to make a huge amount of difference. Don't throw it away. Don't throw it away. But uh, this, you know, this is great to see this sort of racing. They're, they're making it hard and they're fighting for it and they're not being silly. Well, they're going to squabble for the draft on the front straight away. As a change for fastest up of the race, Kalen Chin improves his lap time, but how good's this battle pack with uh, Konomis, Seltwanger and Bartain yeah. leads the way. Uh, Scott's done a great job tonight. He's up into sixth place. That's a fabulous... Um, result for those guys, fourth and sixth on the road. What a super job. They've really brought themselves as a team back into contention in this series. Well, the thing about Scott Partain is he's not quick. He knows he's not quick, but he finishes races. Oh, and for the I think last he is two quick. weeks, 
he's done that supremely well. He hasn't got the pace of the guys right up front. He was at fifth place last week. Did a phenomenal job from Aragon to get himself onto uh, the top five and scoring a boatload of points for that team. So tonight will be relevant again. We'll be one stop further back as it currently stands, but the race is still yet to be decided. And Zeltwanger is coming hard for these guys. Looking a little bit deeper in the field is Ben Roberts as well. We've got to keep half an eye on. And uh, Corey Bennett got the job done on at turn number one. So continuing to trade places up and down the field. It's, it's been a huge run. This has just been an awesome night of racing, Dave. I think you might find some of these guys are carrying a little bit of damage too. They might have a bit bent wing or a, you know, a wheel that's a bit out of alignment. But these cars don't all be perfect. They've been racing them, you know, and they keep clobbering those great big curves. They're the frail mate race cars. They're open wheelers. They're not, you know, not a big old tank of a touring car. And those, those little concrete lumps and turtles and crocodiles and things, they definitely damage these cars. I, I like the term that was uh, spouted out in chat by Sher, wombats. Call them wombats going forward, Dave. Okay. I feel like running over a wombat. I shouldn't say that too wild. My, uh, my wife is a zookeeper after all. She does speak fondly of the wombats. Doesn't say a lot about you, does it? <laughs> Where do you think she got all the years of experience? Yeah. I was looking after this monkey. So, how is your cage? <laughs> I'm allowed out of it from time to time, but only if I'm wearing my safety vest and lead. Okay, Here's a move. Gonna, Dawson's got a bit. Good toe. The cars have got good, looks like good aero. Oh, that was a bit. Mum, there, I don't know that. Oh, he's gone. He's gone round. Nathan Norman. And that was Nathan Norman who's flicked it. Sorry, it was Dawson, actually. I thought it would have been Norman. It was Dawson who flicked it around at, uh, yeah. at turn one that time by. And that battle between Giamato Sinese and Nathan Norman's going to continue on, by the way, as is Caleb Hyde's coming up on some lap traffic at this point in time at the front end of the field. And there's a car missing, what, front end rear wing? No, it's just rear wing. It was uh, Ryan Carlson who will sidestep these guys. And Danny Davis is still <laughs> managing to hang on to Caleb Heights uh, as it currently stands. Mara is coming, though. Jack Mara is absolutely getting closer to these guys. I think uh, they're going to run out of three time, minutes. Though. They're only yeah. got three minutes, a couple of laps. He's not going to get to them in a couple of laps unless they make a mistake or... Whatever, but it's interesting that Davison seems to be coming back at Caleb Hyde's again now. So, you know, maybe Caleb's superiority on tyres is diminishing. Well, the other thing to think about here, they've got three laps. They, they mm. have got three laps. This is not going to be two laps left to run. No way. They are going to get the third lap out of this, and it'll only be about 10 or 15 seconds or so. Not a huge margin, but they will get three laps. Who's got the fuel to go that far? Is it going to become all of a sudden a fuel race when they kick over into that extra lap? And like I said, it's not much. It is absolutely nothing that's going to get them that third lap here. The, the, Kalen's got his... He's, he's fine. He's out in front. He's got his six-second lead, and he's done a beautiful job as, as per usual. Daniel Harris really sitting there, second place, good six uh what has he got four seconds over third place caleb hides but caleb danny davis and, the, and jack mara to a certain degree the fight is on so the first two positions oh look out don't get too wide out on those caleb i'll do damage um those uh that battle for third place is, is where it's at at the moment the first two steps of the the um, podium are pretty secure but um you know caleb will be taking his boot off ready for his shoey on, a, on the last <laughs> lap, I reckon. <laughs> Might come to the line with one foot on the pedal and uh, hands managing those shoelaces to get them undone. Zeltwang has closed in on Bartain. Konomas has fallen back a little bit off of that one. Bailey Evans has actually started to close in on Kenny Konomas late in this piece. There's a lot to go on with there. Davison stabilised now, not losing any time to Jack Mara. That was critical that they didn't continue to squabble. So we have a boatload of points here. And for Zeltwanger... We've really got to look on this tower now. How far back is 10 seconds? Well, it's going to be probably about... I reckon it's going to be about nine spots, eight, nine spots. That's huge. And, and I've got to say, Scott Bartain's doing a great job here holding him off. Well, 10 seconds, we're actually hearing a lot of dropping back to P9. So it's really, really tight for Zeltwanger. You cannot afford to fight Bartain. How, how are we getting that? Because I'm, I'm seeing it on those times. I'm looking at those times and going, he's got to get back to 10th. 
Yep, you're, you're four to tenth right now, but he may, as it currently stands, he's on the fringe of getting ninth spot. Yeah, but that's Bailey Evans, and Bailey's Bailey's pretty quick, so that's uh, you got to put a bit of time on Bailey Evans there. And mind you, Bailey's hard in battle with uh, Kenny Economist. He's like, are they or not? Yeah, they are right together. So interesting. Scott Bartain's doing a really good job here, holding his own. He's not giving in. He's, I mean, he might say he's not fast, but he can be fast when he needs to be. He's doing a great <laughs> job here. He's holding off one of the one of the uh, the top guys in the series here, and he's holding his own. And half of, you know, what was it, six tenths last lap round, and it's about the same this time. He's got to watch that toe, and he's he's going to cover it. Fight for it, Scott. You got to fight for this one. I don't know that he knows that Zelt Wang has got a penalty. I think he thinks he's going to defend for this one. So, well, uh, as it currently stands, he's uh, oh. yeah, he's got no spotter in the session, so he's got no no outside help to sort of help him wow. out. This will be the final lap of the race here, by the way. Leader Kalen Chin is now taking the white flag. Has he or have they got a um, they got a team room in here? Well, they're going to settle on down as it comes through the middle sector, and uh, Selt Wanger nearly got to Bartain's back corner he's gonna have a go at him to really try and harass him through the last part of this lap i don't know if zeltwinger knows he's got a penalty he might think this one's actually four positions that oh, currently stands between these guys so yeah he's in he's in um a voice chat with danny scott he is and they've got their race channel but oh, telling the two of them through danny davis has come back and nick p3 off caleb Blides. So that wow. has changed hands on the last lap of the race. And talking about teammates sitting in there and talking together as it currently stands. They come off the last corner. How close is Hines? Hines has got a supreme run. He's going to get him as it currently stands. He hasn't broken the toe. He's going to squeeze him as Denny Davidson. The line's coming. It's not soon enough. Caleb Hines picks the pockets wow. of Denny Davidson on the last lap of the race on the run what to the finish. line. There's nothing in it between them. There was four hundredths of a second. Got the same count up again here. Can can Scott hold off Zeltwanger? He's good. He's got the extra bit of distance and that he obviously got a bit better drive off that last corner. So well done. What a great drive from Scott there in sixth place. And then he's going to behind them as well as they go to the yep. line. Does Konomis get there? Does he nick the pockets of Bailey Evans? He does not. Wow. And, and it's continuing right back through the field. Look, here we go again. See them popping out of the toe back further. Ewan Baker crosses the line in 12th, but I don't think he'll register points here tonight because that 10 second penalty. But it only drops in oh, hold on. one spot. It only drops yeah, in one spot. Yeah, it only drops in one spot, so we all get 14th. And so Ewan... easy will be the last the last, uh, last point score for the evening. So that's a good job. Right, it's after 45 minutes of hard racing, it's nice to get one point, isn't it? Zelt Wanger is going to come home ninth after his penalty, so he will clean that one up and still get some points. But Caleb Hides and Kalen Chin, P1 uh, and P3, although in that reverse order, yeah, they have done a phenomenal job in terms of things, and that will probably be enough to catapult them to the series lead. And Zelt Wanger is going to sit there and think about that pit lane entry. And he is going to rue that and rue that and rue that. And the other side of that coin for Zelt Wanger is he scored no points back at Magello in the rain. He had some severe dramas yeah. when the rain came down as well. A lot of races to go. And in two weeks' time, we're back because we've got a break next week. But two weeks' time, we're back. And we're back at Oshersleben, which is a real a little bull ring for F F3 cars. These are the final results as they come across the line. Kalen Chin got home by seven seconds. When he wins them, he wins them by a fair way. Daniel Harris comes home in second. Caleb Hyde sneaks through to sneak that spot at the line from Danny Davison. Davison had a good night in terms of the points. Jack Mara, we hardly talked about him. There he is in P5. Scott Bartain, great night in terms of uh, everything. Uh, Zeltwinger home in seventh at the line will drop. Uh, to ninth position behind Kenny Konomis, but only just in behind him. Uh, Bailey Evans will be home in eighth, and Kenny Konomis, sorry, that'll be Bailey Evans at seventh, Kenny Konomis in eighth, Zeltwang in ninth, Ben Holiday rounds out your top ten.
Tyson Broad home in 11th. He'll be happy with that one. Ewan Baker will drop one spot, which will promote Ben Roberts to 12th. So Ewan Baker home in 13th. Corey Rob Bennett, sorry, Corey Bennett in 14th. Giuliano Sinise snags the last point that was on offer. Outside the points, though, Caleb Dawson had an okay night. Phenomenal battle from Nathan Norman. That was keen. That was interesting to keep an eye on. Uh, John Monday, Matt Keane, and Ryan Carlson. First car, one lap down, sits in 20th. Finally, we get to the cars way off the pace. Lachlan Taylor had huge dramas after that restart. Harrison Lilas and Drew Collins, 11th, uh, 11 laps down. Uh, Sean Doyle, Eddie Beswick at 17. Kobe Williams will be ruining things and he will not be friends with Ewan Baker. Those two, I'd be interested to see what words they have each for each other after the race. Caleb Bellack and Sam Sutton cause the safety car. That'll be an interesting one between those two. They will not be friends as well. And uh, <laughs> Sam Chapman, Jamie Christensen had issues earlier on in the piece. Drama, drama, drama is about all I have to say from tonight, Dave, because that was one of the more interesting... Across the two races, we've had one be a superstar race over the last couple of weeks. The other one's sort of just been there and thereabouts, been a little bit boring. But both races tonight had me jumping out of my skin. Yeah, it's, and it's really been interesting that you know, it hasn't been pouring rain every every round like a lot of the series have since iRacing introduced the rain. The rain sort of come realistically. You know, we've come to Fuji and Silver got a bit of a wet race and then the, the pros got a bit of a dry race. And the other the other week we had the pros getting a wet race and the, the Silver getting a dry race. And, and I love that they qualified in the wet and then the race was almost dry. And, it, yeah, it's just... It's quite realistic and it's had a whole new dimension to this. And I think the guys are coming to grips with it and they're having to understand, uh, you know, how do I pick? Do I start on wets? Do I start on dries? And I, I'm seeing in the chat rooms from Silver guys saying, oh, I couldn't believe when I started on wets and how good it was. And I, I was really worried how far someone's going to come back at me. And it's added a whole new dimension and it's just given them so much more enjoyment and so much more fulfillment when you're racing. It's just fantastic. It's just something different to debate, something different to enjoy, just a completely different taste of racing. I, th I thoroughly enjoyed that. And I think it's going to be one of those ones that, that lives on for a fair while. And it's probably going to be a request as well going yeah, forward. And, it's, and it's not going the other to... thing I really love, I really love there's no fast repair. Yeah. <laughs> I do because these guys got to learn, you know, you got to think, geez, do I make that move or not? Because if I make a mistake, it's like the real world. If I make a mistake and I tear a corner off, I'm out of the race. Yeah, there isn't. You can't, don't go back and hit refresh and oh look, I got a brand new car out of the cloud. That's not that's not reality. And we're trying to. This is supposed to be a simulation, a simulation of reality. And we've I've spent all this time and money and effort creating a real weather system rather than just rain that falls, but a complete weather system and environment for i racing. And I think the same thing with the that you know it's wrong to just go press a button and fix my car. It you know you've got to. You got to look after the car. That's part of a race driver's job is to make sure you get it to the finish. Yeah, yeah. You've got to make sure that you've got the race craft to get the car there. And uh, I, I would definitely say Zeltwanger's uh, going to have to have a good hard look at himself after tonight's racing. Will probably be the key. Oh, it's the a little, it's a little mistake, and everybody makes them. And and you know, mate, he won't be the first, and he won't be the last. And as long as you learn from those things, you know, you move on. But it was a bit silly. He didn't. He, you know, if he just just feathered the throttle and just he probably would have been asked in the next two or three corners he had the pace well caleb hyde is going to be third place here tonight he'll be the first driver to jump on by and have a chat to us caleb interesting battle with danny davison it was fought all the way to the line and you just got there to nick it back <laughs> off of him mate how good was that race though that was that was some good old-fashioned fun you were in the wars early Everything was happening around you. You had to look after your front wing, keep the wheels on it, keep the car right where you needed to keep it, and then you got the rewards thereafter. Yeah, it's just right, eh? Um, podium finally in F3A. So, um, yeah, look, happy, good for the team as well. Kalen did a phenomenal job all night, so as far as I'm concerned, it's a it's good night for Biz. In terms of things, Fuji, she's great for going racing. You had to think on your feet, though, there tonight and took tyres at the pit stop, that that tyre fall off. Danny Davison's car held on, he didn't take tyres at the pit stop, and he still managed to hang on and really, really trouble you guys there towards the tail end. Were you expecting that? Were you expecting him to fall significantly further off? Um, no, look, it was a bit of a fucking last minute call to take tyres. Um, yeah, it was surprising that he didn't. Um, but yeah, 
it worked out all right, I suppose. So, um, yeah, ah, she was all right. Mate, the racing over the last couple of weeks has been interesting. We're talking about it. You know, you come to Fuji and that rainstorm hits and it hits in a big way. It didn't happen for you guys here in the pro here tonight, but is that something that now goes into the back of your mind when you're planning for a race race weekend now is, is I've, I've got to be aware that weather could play a factor here and we can't just come in underprepared. Uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, look, I haven't done any wet laps uh, in terms of practice for any of the rounds. Um, so look, that's poor effort from me. Um, but I'm just happy that, you know, we, we've made a big step from the past two rounds. Like round one, we were absolutely nowhere. We got, I mean, Kaylin did a phenomenal, phenomenal job at New Jello to, to win by how far he, he led. But uh, look, Aragon was a bit of a bit of a nightmare for us in Eclipse. And uh, look, we're slowly making the step up. Um, so yeah, still more work to do, but we'll keep pressing at it. Talk to us about a little bit of the discussion in and around the team, because obviously Kalen's pretty cool, calm customer. He's, he's well and truly clear out in front, but the rest of the teammates in in that other um, side scene that you guys had going on there tonight, disastrous night. How does that affect the mood with all you boys racing along together? Yeah, I'd say Kobe and Eddie had a few screws loose in their minds tonight. So, <laughs> yeah. look, um, probably smart that I had the deafen button uh, binded to my steering wheel. Not that it was used regardless, but look, it's, it's there just in case, you know, so... Uh, yeah, there's a bit of chatter going on, but we'll make our way through, so she'll be right. Mate, uh, more importantly, are Kobe Williams and Ewan and Baker ever going to be friends? Uh, probably not, no. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Mate, thanks for the I, chat. I, I, floor's all yours. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, you got more to I, say? So during the race, uh, I, I think the blue Eclipse livery just attracts the Scotties, you know. It's got the same colour as the flag, so um, yeah, a bit of an issue. <laughs> Two weeks in a row, we, they've had a run in run together with the blue eclipse and and ewan baker so yeah mate the fists are, the fists are on in the paddock <laughs> mate uh. as, as somebody named scott thank you yeah I, I really feel the love coming from your way mate thanks for that everyone's got a nickname though one name that they just don't seem to like anyway caleb congratulations here tonight floor's all yours to thank the boys that make it possible Ah, uh, yeah, just huge thank you to who have we got cody d jackson barry dylan burst uh, grinding out all week on the setup, they did a phenomenal job getting the dampers all tuned up. Uh, we didn't have to do any last minute changes, so that was good. Um, yeah, should be right. All the FRG boys for getting it going. Um, yeah. Mate, congratulations and uh, fingers crossed if you keep pulling out hot setups like that, you might see you more as the season progresses. Thank you very much for your time, Caleb. Fingers crossed. See you. <laughs> God, he's a personality, isn't he, Dave? <laughs> Breaker. Uh, we'll move one step further forward on the podium. We're going to be chatting to the driver who finished second here tonight, and I think it's a little bit of the same from these boys. One half of the team did very well. The other half of the team has got some questions to answer. Daniel Harris, you come into tonight saying, look, Lee's probably a little bit quicker here tonight. Uh, turns out you managed to put the car in second and Lee's P nowhere. Um, that's a bit unfair. That's... Yeah, that's a really unfair, to be honest. Um, Lee did an incredible recovery drive. Um, unfortunately, got caught out by the safety car and Fuji's massive pit ex pit entry line. Um, so I think that's really unfair because I reckon Lee probably would have had the pace on me should he had not on that penalty. And then on top of that, I believe he finished P10 um, after the 10 second penalty that he got as well. Um, so yeah, I don't I don't think that's fair to him. Yeah. No, he's uh, he did a really good job. It's a it's a tough place around here. Um, pl plenty of width and plenty of creativity as far as lines go. So, uh, how'd you find it tonight? Yeah, look, I put in a lot of practice um, and a lot of work on the setup. Um, we had about two extra people kind of working on it with me this week, um, and I, you know, we went in feeling quite good. Um, I'd been matching kind of lap times and kind of stalking people through Garage 61. Um, and, you know, I was feeling confident and just came down to it and I just didn't have the pace. I don't know what setup they had, um, or at least Kalen had, but it was ridiculously quick. And there's nothing really much we could do. Yeah, this place is a bit of a balance between your straight line speed. You can't run a lot of wing, but you need you need good downforce through some of those medium speed corners in the middle of the middle of the lap so it is a bit of a compromise yeah. and then you need a car that rotates really well in those last few corners yeah I'm, I'm wondering if maybe we could have gone with a bit more wing than we had um we were running it kind of low i guess for 
what we could have been running. Uh, Lee and I ran a race simulation today and um, found that the lower wing was overall a bit faster. Um, but yeah, um, just not much we could do. I guess we were just pushing and Lee just did a really good recovery drive and was just unfortunate with the penalty. I wouldn't be disappointed in sitting second on the podium. Yeah, it's getting a bit of a habit now and I'm getting a little annoyed. I'd like to be sitting on there's, the top step. There's 28 blokes behind you that'd like to be where you are. Yeah, yeah. It's still frustrating coming second every week though. Oh, it's only three weeks. <laughs> yeah, in F1 leagues, they uh, called me the bridesmaid because I kept coming second. So I might have to bring <laughs> oh, that big name back. Oh dear. <laughs> might have to bring it back uh... if it keeps happening. Uh, lucky you look good in the dress. Oh. <laughs> Might be able to. In terms of things, mate, we've uh, we're going to take a little bit of a two-week hiatus uh, as it stands here. Does that give you a little bit more time to sit down and tweak on the setup? Is it going to be a focus on some wet weather racing to make sure that you've put the, the time and the comfort levels in to, to get that right going forwards? Um, yeah, we're looking at um, we've got all the forecasts written down already, so we kind of know what we're expecting. Um, Don't trust the weather, man. <laughs> I trusted it tonight and it worked out fine. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we're going to kind of put it down and um, we got two weeks to work on that setup rather than one. So we're going to really put our heads down and try and nail it. Right, in terms of things, next time out, we'll be heading to Ockerschleben. So we'll jump from Japan over to Germany. Uh, comfort levels at that track, given that uh, the last time I saw you out at that track, you, uh, you knocked a wheel of mine off, actually. So uh... Uh, I, don't, I don't recall, Scott. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, I figured that might be the case. Uh, comfort levels <laughs> at uh, Ockerschleben either way, brother? Um, not too bad. I didn't feel like I was doing too badly in that um, kind of practice thing that we did. Um, but I think uh, quite a bit of work will be needed. Um, haven't driven too much on that track. A lot less room out there than there is around here. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, big time. A lot of um, yeah. single file corners. Yep. And finally, mate, the good. opportunity to thank all the guys that make it possible at Fiercely Forward. I know, like you said, there's a few guys that have been working on the setup this week. Yeah, big thank you to uh, Adam Adam Merchant, who uh, helped with the setup. Um, Ali, who was kind of trying to sort the strategy out, which we were very hesitant. I know I spoke to you about that, Scott. Uh, we went with uh, what you recommended. Um, and yeah, I mean, yeah, just a big thank you to Ali and Adam, who are just helping, and uh, Nick as well, who help me with that wing change hey, congratulations and uh, see you from Ockersley Ben and uh, hopefully the next time out we'll get to see Lee on the podium because he's certainly had enough drives uh, thus far this season with the potential to be here Just he's just going to tick that last box now yeah he definitely deserves it I reckon we'll see it next week or two weeks I guess thank you very much for your time Dano we'll chat to you in the near future cheers boys thank you and finally, it's the second time we've spoken to him this season. The first time it was due to rain. This time in Japan, it was not. It was all about pace. It was all about speed. It was all about mastery. And Kalen Chin ticked every single one of those boxes tonight. Mate, uh, how was the race there in that one? You were obviously quite comfortable in terms of things. Took tyres at pit stop. Uh, Davison popped out ahead of you. Was there any worries in terms of your mind after that period? Um, not really. It was more of just keeping the car on the road. Um, it was a bit risky, um, on turn two, so I was just trying to not ruin my race that early, and I knew I had the pace on him, so I was just trying to wait for the cold tires to warm up, and then once the third lap, uh, after the restart, I was easily overtook him, and, you know, I just kept my race and managed to pull a gap. Once you're in that sort of a, a location uh, with, with, with a bit of a gap underneath your uh, your feet, it's sometimes some drivers can sort of switch off. You, you know, you just go into that, I've just got a log laps now, I'm just going to be nice and smooth and consistent. That didn't seem to be the case. You looked like you kept pressing on. Fastest half of the race came your way late on in the piece. So uh, was was there a lot of emphasis on, I'm, I'm really going to try and stretch this margin as far as I possibly can? Was there any concern about the tyres? We know the tyre wear was a factor here tonight. Um, I mean, I just really wanted to drive as fast as I could. Um, <laughs> uh, I wanted the fastest lap. I didn't know if I had it in the bag, so I just kept pushing, wanting to maybe get that extra point. I'm not sure. Um, but um, yeah, uh, I just wanted to just pull as much as I could because I, I saw Daniel at the end was also uh, pushing as well. So 
I'll just managed to pull a bit and like, I don't know. <laughs> I've been asked that I need to ask you about your good team and good stuff interview from uh, your uh, from your younger uh, days. You're definitely <laughs> probably one of the boss here. Uh, that's from way back in the day. I think it was like five-ish. Uh, it was a long time ago. It was like my first interview, I think. Um, I think I have gotten a bit more uh, quote-unquote professional in it, I guess, now, but... <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was just uh, my first interview I did as a kid uh, when I first did a race in Singapore. Mate, in terms of things, that doesn't make it easy. Dad's watching along, not just watching along. He's encouraging us to uh, to give you a little bit of a razzing, mate. A lot yeah. of support from your family, by the sounds of things. Yeah, my family and dad especially, well, both mom and dad, have been just my number one supporters ever throughout all of this, what is it, 14 years now that I've been karting and driving and um, my dad, he watches every single one of my races and I can't thank him enough for showing all the support he can and, you know, my mom especially, even though if she doesn't watch the races, they're always there for me and you know, just pushing me on, it gives me the want to, the need to do the best that I can for them. So, Callan, any plans to uh, get your butt in a real race car and out of a, out of a step up from a go kart in the future? I wish. I I really wish. Um, but you know, motorsport is an expensive sport. Sure is. And if you don't have if you don't have the funding, it, it, you can't really go anywhere. Um, and of course, I also have to do my HSC this year, so yep. <laughs> uh, I have that to uh, content with. And um, yeah, I'm just gonna try see what I can do, just do the best I can on sim racing, and hopefully, an opportunity comes my way. Yeah, well, there's a lot of those around these days. Things that the world is changing, isn't it? Yeah, especially when uh, getting to like Formula Four, Formula Three costs millions of dollars. It's crazy. Yep. In terms of things, there's obviously a long list of people to thank, and uh, you've already done some of the thanking in terms of the family, but uh, the floor is all yours to thank the entire list, and I think mum and dad might get another mention. Yeah, uh, they, they always get the first mention just because of how much they support me. So obviously, dad, he's sitting near me right now, um, waving to the non-existent camera, watching the stream. <laughs> <laughs> mom, I think she's in the kitchen, but she'll watch this later. Um, of course, Eclipse, Sims, uh, Eclipse Sim Sports. Sorry, uh, you know we put in a ton of work this this round uh, after the stinker last week, and you know it paid off. Caleb, he also finished P3. Um, shame what happened to Eddie and Kobe, but uh, yeah, we put in a ton of work this week. And of course, lastly, uh, the stream that I sent to my friends. I'm sure some of them are watching right now. Always love to thank them for supporting me in every race that I, <laughs> uh, every race stream that I send them. Well, thank you very much for your time, Kalen. You've got a really, really strong network of people around you, and hopefully that leads to more success in the future. Congratulations on the race win tonight. We'll see you in a couple of weeks from uh, Ockerschleben. Thank you. Well, Dave, that is going to wrap everything up here tonight it's a night where eclipse sim sports finally put a little bit of consistency onto the cards couldn't see them take over the championship lead we'll have to tune in again in two weeks time this was the last round of races held under the australian eastern daylight savings time time threshold next time out will be from motorsport arena august and like you said there is some really really tight corners here it's phenomenal for open wheel racing and uh, it's going to be at that australian eastern standard time time slot as well so a couple of changes coming in the next couple of weeks but it is two weeks away to that next round yeah can't wait to see it and uh, a big change from fuji very very different character of circuit and uh, we'll see if that changes who comes uh, what cream comes to the top next time well, you'll have to tune in if you want to keep up to date with everything that's going on. Don't forget, uh, in two weeks' time, Formula 3 Australia. Put it on the calendar now. We'll see you all then. The racing action was exciting tonight. Can they double it up next time out? We'll see you all then from 17th of April, 8.25pm Australian Eastern Standard Time. See you guys then.